Good afternoon everyone. A quick video for me today. Um, seeing as we're all locked in, might as well use the time, you know, sensibly. So here we go. What I'm going to show you today is how to make a very, very simple border for your interiors using only PowerPoint. It's very easy to do. There is one image that I will be inserting into, into it, but you don't have to. You can do this entirely without any outside stuff. You can just do this with PowerPoint. Um, quite handy to do because you can use this for borders for your internal pages. You can then turn those borders into um, borders for journals, borders for notebooks, just to add interest. You can also use the same technique just to make backgrounds for your pages that you can then layer over lines, boxes, other, other items that you would use in a journal or any kind of book really. Um, but it's a way of making your pages completely individual and adding interest to your work and therefore making your stuff a bit more unique and a bit more interesting to the buyers, which let's face it, that's what this is all about. So I'm going to crack on. I'm going to share my screen with you and show you what I mean. So here we go. This is the first page I have, as you can see, I've pre-prepared one so that you can see what I'm talking about. That is very simple. And apart from the pattern that is inside these little icons here, the rest of this has all been put together with nothing but PowerPoint. So that is what I'm gonna show you how to do today. Now I'm not gonna do all of it because let's be honest that would be incredibly boring for you to sit and watch me do this so i will show you how to get it started and i'm going to show you some techniques on how to group items together so that you can turn them around and swivel them to cut down the amount of time something like this would take so let me crack on i'm going to start off with a fresh page and as you can see i've already pre-prepared this border but i will show you how to do that so grab yourself in the selection box here whoops didn't mean to do that um grab yourself this square box here and then you're going to just literally draw yourself a box on your page remember that this guide back here is showing you where the bleed edge is now for, for borders, you really want to go right to the edge of the page because you don't actually mind if a little bit is going to get snipped off. You want your buyers to have a pattern to the edge of the page. So do not be too concerned about that. However, use it as a guide as to whereabouts on the inside of the page that you want your borders to finish because you really don't want to be in a situation where... Um, you've gone too far into your page with a border. You want as much usable space on your page, but you still want it to look interesting. So here's your box. We are going to right click on the box and we are going to change the outline and we're going to change it to gray and we're going to change the weight of the box up to two and a half points, makes it a bit thicker. We're also going to change the fill to no fill because we don't really want the fill. Now, if you pick up this border, you will now see that it's movable. And as you can see, you can find the middle of your page just by moving your box around and the guides should pop up. There you go, there they are. The pink guide should pop up and let you know that that box is slap bang right in the center of your page. You can now just delete that background. You don't need it. We are going to work on making a massive mess of this page. So the first thing to do is pick your icons. Now your icons will all be up here in this section. There is another section of icons, but I'm using this lot specifically today because they're the easiest to find and because you can also, there's so many of them, you can play with them. And let's be honest, get comfortable with these and then you can move on to the more exciting and more interesting stuff. But for now, we're going to work with these. So all of the ones that I've used in the previous page are actually already up here at the top because I've just recently used them. So all you're going to do is grab a few of these icons. Right click on them, change the outline to the grey that we wanted, take the fill out. So no fill. 
size at this point doesn't matter because we are going to scale them so it really isn't important so we're just going to change the weight the color of the outline and the fill now you can have these as solid fill as well but for me i sometimes think that um doing this leaving them with just lines gives people the opportunity to doodle it gives them a chance to color in the edges of their pages which it's not to everyone's taste and a lot of people won't bother but there's people like me who when i'm i'm sitting using my journal i literally scribble in the margins i draw little pictures i make little doodles i write little notes so for me or i make patterns inside shapes like this just with a pen um so for me actually having something like this is a bit of a draw okay so um well what else we got we've got hearts so let's have a heart all right i'm just going to start off with these first few ones so that you can see what i'm talking about and then um if i'll show you the techniques for these you'll be able to apply it um to the rest of the items okay so here we go we've got a few all right so for instance let's do the diamond shape because the diamond shape i did put a fill on right so if you see this diamond you can leave this diamond completely clear if you right click on this diamond um you're going to see that there's some options for fill right so the fill options are all down here um and you 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 have a few things that you can do you can add a picture which is how i put the pattern into the icons on the previous page you can have a gradient fill which is just going to put some color in for you and as you can see so again that's another option you've got i don't know how many gradients you could actually play with here but there's loads so let's be honest you have a huge amount of variation and possibilities just by playing with the the, the gradients the textures and the the patterns and the colors so much you can do just messing about with these um in particular i put a picture in and i basically picked up a pattern that i have got sitting on my desktop so picked that one and there you go suddenly i have got a shape with a pattern in it that finishes at the border now here again is an idea just for um, coloring pages fill your page completely with this pattern maybe put a different pattern behind it and you've got a coloring page how easy is that so that is one of my icons filled and as you can see i can size this as big or as small as I want it to be. I can make it as thin or as wide as I want it to be. The options here are endless. So I am going to stick that one in the center at the top and I'm going to size it to fit. And now I am going to pick up the next icon and I'm going to pop that in the corner. And I'm going to do something else with this one. I am going to turn it around because it is wrong way around for me oops so why are you not letting me find my uh, oh there it is see this here is it lets you turn so it's gone off the end of the page which is why i couldn't find it And I'm going to size that to fit there. Okay. The only thing that annoys me sometimes with PowerPoint is on a slide, if you go too, too far to the top, your stuff just disappears off the edge. And it's a little bit annoying but just with a little bit of fiddling oh there we go we're in place 
Okay, so, um, and again with the heart, you can make it as small as you, big as you like, position it into your border, make sure that you're happy with the size of it, and hey, presto, away you go. Right, I'm also going to put a couple of dots in because the dots I find are quite useful as little fillers. So let's change that dot outline and no fill. And again, with the dots, you can make them as big or as small as you like. So let's make this one as much smaller. Make my screen bigger, then you can see what I'm fiddling with. I know it looks fiddly at the moment, but I am actually making this a lot harder, looking a lot harder than it actually needs to be. Use the box with the arrows below on small objects to move them around. It's much easier than trying to grab the object and move it. OK, so and then I'm going to copy that. Control C to copy, Control V to plant it. The second copy. And you are you literally just want to take all of these shapes and copy them and fill this space up all around the top of your border, the first top of your border. Right. I'm not going to go mad and do the whole thing because, you know, that would be so boring. You might cry with the tedium of it. I always find it's much more fun doing this stuff yourself than watching someone else do it because, well, I'm, maybe I'm just weird. And now I don't need any comments below <laughs> telling me just how weird I am because I kind of already know. Right. OK, so there we go. Now, in order to um, copy this easily, what you can do, in fact, if I just put two more dots in. You can do this with stars. You can do this with all sorts of things. All right, there we go. That'll do. All right, okay. Just, just this is just an example. So now, what you want to do with with a group that you want to be able to copy and move, if you click on, so press your button down on Control and click on the icons. Like so. You can now put, if you click on a range, you can group them. And PowerPoint will now see that whole section of icons as a group. You can now move that and turn it as a group. And as you can see now, how that is a very useful thing to be able to do, because if I put this one back at the top, straighten it up first, and now put it back at the top. And see the red lines come up to tell me it's in the middle. Drop it. If I click on the edge of that and then control copy, control V, I've got a second copy of it, which I can now drag to the bottom of my page. Turn it over. And pop that at the bottom of my page. And as you can see, the, gr the grid lines, the red grid lines that have appeared on the screen are telling me that that is completely in line with the ones that's at the top. So there you go. That is how you can top and tail a border. You can also do the same thing for the left and the right um, just by copying sections. So if you've created a really nice little pattern of three or four icons that you really like to, to go together, just group them. It keeps them together and you can add groups to groups. So if you've picked you know, you've got four sections now of groups on the side of your page and you're thinking, yeah, that looks like a really good border all together. You just click on all of the groups together and 
put them together and then the whole thing will then become a group so it becomes three groups within a group and you can move the whole lot together turn it around and flip it over to the other side of your page so take the time to make a really cute design but then cheat by well it's not really cheating but it is cheating by putting it together as a group and rotating and flipping and copying and there you go that is how simple this can be and you can create pages with different little icons on in second well minutes minutes you could spend hours but in a few minutes i've shown you how to do it so i hope this was helpful if you have any questions or queries do let me know slap a like on if you've enjoyed the video because that always helps me and i've also put some links in below for some places to get some really cute graphics um, and a link to my shop where you can find some ready-made pages and ready-made covers just to get you kick-started in your kdp journey have a wonderful afternoon everybody take care of yourselves now